So this is my talk, 10 things I hate about Drupal code. Um, we'll come back to why the Drupal's in brackets, but there's a few general things in there as well. But first I say, I'm Mark Jones. Uh, I've been a Drupal developer for three years now. And okay. um, after the, I've worked at LiveLink for two years, and now I'm currently working at CTI. Uh, I've been there for nearly a year. Started off since sort of general site building, quickly moved on to uh, module development and back end, and also uh, specialised slightly in commerce and particularly Drupal commerce and different customizations there. And um, I've got a handful of patches on Drupal.org that have been committed, um, none to core yet, but we're getting there. And um, why am I telling you all this about me? Well, I was reading a book recently. Um, Hatchet Job by Mark Kermode, and it's about the role of film critics, but one thing it said is that criticism without risk to the critic has no value whatsoever. And he makes the point that if you're just anonymous, making points online, and you've got no risk to your reputation, then you've got nothing to lose, and it doesn't mean anything. So hopefully by telling you who I am, this will help you see where I'm coming from, and if you want to argue with me after, you can come and find me. Um, so I'm on Twitter, it was on the last slide, just another mark. Um, but yeah, I'm not expecting everyone to agree with everything I say, but we'll see how we go. Um, so I've grouped these 10 things into four general categories, where one is things that aren't really Drupal specific, but are quite annoying and do turn up in particularly contribute modules. The second one are some very specific Drupal modules that really annoy me and I find myself complaining about whenever I end up on supporting a site with these modules. And then there's a few more general Drupalisms about um, not really the community but things that aren't necessarily code or the way that we do things that I think we can improve on. And then there's a finally to wrap it all up. And just to clarify, I'm not hating on Drupal. I try to provide solutions for most of these things that I'm complaining about. and the actual core itself and community, everything is great, so <laughs> no tomatoes. Um, so the first one is coding standards, and I won't go on too long about it because there's been whole talks dedicated to this topic, and generally we all agree that um, if you have a set of standards and you follow the Drupal ones in particular, that it helps understanding, provides consistency between different modules, and it helps collaboration a lot. And obviously as Drupal community, we're quite big on collaboration. Um, but we still find situations where the standards aren't being followed and so we need to work on this as a group and in particular read them to start with, work out what they are. Um, even if you disagree with them, they're there for a reason and everybody else is using them so you're better off following. Um, to make sure that you're following, there's tools like Code Sniffer and also Git Hooks and so you, Chris was talking about setting up Code Sniffer briefly with PHP Storm yesterday, so go back and watch that talk. Um, but it allows you to analyze all the code in your project or base, and just it will take the standards that are in the coding standards and tell you everything you've got wrong. Even little things, that, the example yesterday was if you haven't got spaces around your operators, it will point that out, and it's a quick, easy fix. And if you do it as you go along, you won't notice the time difference. Um, so there's a link to the code sniffer module. Um, and the, what I've set up recently as well is if you set up Git hooks, it will allow you to force this before you can commit this to any repo. And so everybody on the team will have to meet them and follow them. And it forces you to follow them, which is what we all want, really. Um, but as I said, these, you, as you go through contrary modules, you will notice problems. And uh, the best thing to do there is to make an issue, put a, provide a patch, because it will be relatively simple. And almost definitely, it will just get committed. I've not seen anybody who's raised a simple, this doesn't follow the standards, have any issues getting it put in, as long as the module hasn't been abandoned. Second point is when you are using the version control, system, um, the size of your commit and the messages that you use. And quite often, this will cause many issues when you come back to debug and find out where something went wrong. Because if there's too much included in your single commit, 
then you can't undo part of it. You have to undo the whole thing and then slowly add each line back in and work out exactly what was going on because you don't know where the bug is. It also makes it hard to know when it was broken. So if you've only done one commit at the end of the day and you've worked on five different issues that day, then, well, if something's gone wrong, it could have gone at any, wrong at any point. Um, one advantage, one way to work around this is git add minus p, which will allow you to go through all the diffs in your file and uh, decide whether to include that in the current commit and do a git add on just different sections of the file. And then you can commit that as normal and have well separated out. This commit is to fix this issue. The, the next commit was to fix the next issue and so on. Um, if you're working in a team, it can help to come up with a standard sort of message format to go with the commit. Um, if you've got a task system, you can reference the ticket that you were fixing or the, even if it's just a project, that might help or the phase of the project. But even things like saying, start, um, we tend to start all of ours with a verb to say, we fixed this, we added this, we've changed this. And if it's relatively short or not clear in the issue, to explain why in that message so that when somebody else comes along and tries to work out exactly where things are, they can just go through the Git log, look at all the different uh, messages and see what people have added. So moving on again. Bad commenting. Um, it's a particular issue. Normally, people tend to focus on lack of comments. But if you're just commenting everything, there can be equal problems. So. You, know, you come to a new project or an old project and you go, well, why did they do that this way? Is there a specific reason they haven't done it the most obvious way? Or is it just that they didn't think of it or something else? And the same applies when you come back to code you've worked on. You come back and see it and go, now I know there's a good reason I did that. I'm not sure what that reason is anymore, so I don't want to touch it. And then you end up with code that's following bad practices, but no one quite knows why. And another bugbear of mine is commented out code where you've made a change and you've left the old version there just in case. But, well, why? It, it, it's making the files bigger. It's making it harder to follow exactly what the code is doing. It's just generally getting in the way. And so to work around this, uh, there's, you can complete all your dot blocks, which will become particularly important in your place with annotations and marking up all your parameters and for um, autocomplete. And then you can set up autocomplete in your ID of choice, which again, Chris was talking about yesterday, so that you can start your comment and it will give you the format and mark out all the parameters and return values for you, and you just have to explain what they're doing. If, you want, if you're working on different things, use branches so that you don't have to comment it out uh, while you fix a different, a more important issue. And the same goes for um, uh, when you're trying to commit things with, in a sensible manner, if you just use the um, add p rather than commenting out get the code that you don't want to be included just yet, that will make it clear for other people. Um, I think this helps then with the code completion tool so that when you're looking for a function to see what it is, if you've got all your comments in there, it will tell you this is a, the parameter, this is what it needs to be, this is the format. And again, that's just, it's helpful, it's polite, it helps everyone. And again, if there's issues in Contrib, go and provide a patch that adds a comment or it starts an issue to ask why that uh, comment is there, what it's doing, and so on. Uh, the fourth one, we've got field collection. So we've moved on to modules now, which um, there's a few in here that I imagine will cause some disagreement. Um, but the field collection module, it's nice at what it does. But when it doesn't work, because of the complexity of the code, it's very hard to just step in and fix it yourself. It, it mostly works, but when it doesn't, it's very hard work to go in and step there. And it's an unnecessary, unnecessary complication. Because what we know, we've used it before, and what we know favor is that rather than a field collection, create a custom node or entity type. Um, use an entity reference field to link that in. So instead of your field collection of fields, you just have a new node type. And then use the country module inline entity form to include that in the parent node form so that 
as far as the end user is concerned, they're all just fields on one type. You can then hide the other type from end users with um, rabbit hole or there's another module I've forgotten the name of. And then it all appears to anybody who needs to that it is just one, but you've got that separation for whatever reason, if you want to have multiple um, collections of the fields, you, can, you just include the node, sort it, do them. Um, and this is more reliable, it's more consistent, and because it's built on nodes and uh, entities, everything will work with it, whether that's views, rules, um, or anything else in Contrib. Whereas the field collection, some of the ways it does things then cause problems later on. Uh, the next module is the workflow module, and we used this recently on a project, um, and it was just a bad choice. There's better out there. Um, we ne personally, I recommend the workbench module. It seems a lot more robust. But workflow, again, it's mostly functional, but there's a lot of poor uh, user interface and user experience in there. There are broken tables where they don't quite close in the right way. Um, the structure is very much, you can tell that it was a Drupal 6 module that has had the absolute minimum to bring it across to Drupal 7, so it doesn't make proper use of fields or the field API. And the development is slow. Um, when we went on, we could, we, there were a couple of issues that we had that we had to fix that were in the issue queue and they got committed, but actually other issues just all seem to have come to a standstill and are just waiting for someone. So unless you're willing to go in and to go through these issues, um, probably better off leaving it alone and just using the workbench module. Um, which as I said, it's, the workbench is built with for Drupal 7 specifically. Um, it uses the field API well to deal with all these issues. And there's better separation of all the sub-modules, so the access, the moderation, the files, and media are all completely separate, so that if you don't need them, you can turn them off. And if you do need to see how they work or to fix them, you can see exactly where you're going because there's a separate module separate directory, just go in there and find the problem. Whereas back with workflow, everything seems to be in together. Um, the next one, one is the date module. And it can be really problematic. And I had a look uh, a couple of days ago, and there's still over a thousand open issues in the issue queue, and 567 bugs. And there was no maintainer doing anything on it at the time. Now, the problem with the date module is there is an alternative. You'll have to use it, find out what the problems, is, problems are that you have and see if you can work around them or whether you just have to dive in and fix the problem. Um, hopefully with Drupal 8, now that some of it's got to the core, the, there's a date component, there's a date field in core itself, most of these issues would have been fixed and that might be where all the development time has gone is to get that ready. And so the actual Drupal 7 one is lagging behind, but there's nothing we can do about that at the moment. There's no alternative. We just have to look for the issues in the queue, see if there are patches there that are awaiting commits, um, help mark them as reviewed by the community if they do work. Um, I think there is a developer who's started, who's recently gained commit access and he's now working through them, but obviously with that many to go through, it's going to be some time before it's ready. Um, so yeah, we're moving on to the Drupalisms. Um, and module all the things, we tend to, well, we'll go into the slide and see. Um, a large slice can have over 100 modules easily and more when you start adding in all your custom ones. And there's a good reason, it comes from a good place, but the temptation is that every time you're working on a different form, that it's separate from every all the other modules you're working on, so it should be a new module. And you, you soon, it spirals and you've got 400, well, we've had 200 modules on a site and they go in and there's only two or three functions in each one. So the solutions are to make sure that you group all your central changes together. And I find that features in particular um, can be a problem here because you create your content type you, and you view, put it in the feature, but then if you need to edit it or edit the form, quite often it, the temptation is to create a new module but with features, the module, dot module file itself is generally left empty by features for you to do things like that. So if you can put those form edits and minor tweaks or new formats in there, that will help to uh, make it smaller. 
Um, you can use some modules which won't help with um, performance, but it will help with when you're looking through the site trying to work out where the different parts come from. You can look at that, see what's happening, and uh, just generally understand the code a lot easier because it's all grouped together. So you can have uh, a content type uh, mod module, but then maybe you do have the uh, if you've got complex permissions on that have that is either a sub-module or, as I mentioned there, a .inc file. Um, there are some standard ones that will work out of the box. Um, views and rules tend to have default uh, files that you can just drop the exported code into and they'll get picked up and it will just work. Um, but if need be, if you've got a module file that's a couple of thousand lines long, consider creating a custom .inc file and including that yourself just so that you're, you, you haven't got these epic files where you can't quite get through it all. Um, I say there's a page on the Drupal.org site where they discuss all the different problems and some of the ways to get around this. And also consider things, particularly modules like Display Suite, which can be very heavy and take up a lot of processing time and things like that, and add a lot of complexity. But if you're only using it to add a class to a field or in a couple of places or things like that, Maybe it's better to do that in a custom smaller module that will just get the job done quickly rather than using the whole of the display suite just for this one little change. Um, and as I say, next one we're on about hacking core, which we all know is a bad thing, and there were many talks and mentions of this. But the other thing is hacking contrib as well. If something doesn't do what you want, which is more likely with contrib, it can be tempting to just dive in, fix it and then leave it like that and never do anything with this fix. Now obviously you can't update them. You're more likely to introduce a security hole because it hasn't gone through all the same processes as core and just generally don't do it. it, it it's accepted everywhere that it's a bad idea. But how can we go about this? Well, bugs happen and particularly in Contrib, there will be issues with some of the modules we've seen and even other ones. Um, if you find a problem, what the way that we work with it at CTI is that we'll have a patches directory which is in sites all or in the site specific directory. Um, there's a file in there which is a, just a normal text file and that lists any patches that have been applied to a module and why they were applied so that when we come along to update the module later we can see exactly what's been changed, why it's been done, where to check with the link to the issue. And then if there's not an issue for it when we find the problem, then if you're not willing to create an issue for it in the uh, list, then it's probably not an actual issue and you shouldn't be doing it. But you shouldn't be hacking the module anyway, there's probably a better way to do it. If it's a genuine problem, create the issue. If you've got a fix, provide the patch, see what other people say, let the community improve your code. If you fix something and it's better, they'll tell you, you'll get included back, you'll get the credit. If there's a problem with the fix, let somebody else who understands it better find it and tell you. And starting it will be the uh, will help get these things done because the module developers have so many issues to go through. If there's half a patch there, the temptation to finish it off will be greater than if it's just, well, I need to go and find out what's happening. Um, check back to the issue queues often so that if things do progress, you can include that in your project. Um, yeah, if someone else is fixing the code, you may as well use it. Um, uh, yeah, if it's a specific use case for your site and you can see why other uh, developers wouldn't want that fix, maybe you need to add a Drupal also in there and point out that this is a sensible place to allow people to edit the code and then that's a, more, that's a better patch to get included because then other people can do, fix other ca use cases uh, in their modules, when, in their projects, whenever they come to the same problem. Uh, and the next uh, issue is Contrib itself. And I, I feel the picture does represent Contrib quite a lot. There's an awful lot there, but you don't know what, where it is or what it is. And there's no sign of necessarily which is the best module which is why we've ended up with things like Workbench and Workflow, where one of them is much more, much better supported and much more used, but occasionally we, we, you'll search for a Workflow module, you'll find Workflow because it's got the name, 
and you'll never know about the other ones and then you end up in these situations where you're using a module that nobody else is using and it's got bugs in it and you've got there's nothing you can do because you've never built your site around it. It, it was, it's difficult to find the modules you want, either that do what you want or that are well enough supported or with the right versions. It's very difficult to compare these modules. Um, as far as I'm aware, there's nothing gone on Drupal.org to allow you to do this. And it, there, there aren't many difficult maintainers, but if you find one or if they're busy with other things or just have left the project, there's not much you can do other than go through the um, channels. Um, it's documented to say if there's an absent maintainer, you, I think it's you create an issue on the module itself. If there's nothing for two weeks, you try contacting them through their contact form, and then there's a issue on Drupal.org and the core where you can say, I've, do, I've been through these channels, there's still no response. Can I have maintainer rights, or can we at least mark it as obsolete or abandoned so that people know this in advance? Um, other way to help with the finding the modules, um, one thing we do quite a lot is look through the popular distributions. So you've got Drupal Commerce, you've got Open Atrium, you've got Open Commons. See what they're using because if they're using it, they presumably tested it quite a lot already. Um, and see, and you might find other modules that would be useful that you never knew about. Um, on Drupal.org slash project slash usage, there's uh, a list of the most popular modules. Occasionally, it's worth a look to see if there's anything new in the top 20 or 30 that might be worth keeping an eye on. Um, look for blog posts. I know that that link is to the Lullabot Module Monday, where every week they write a post about a new module or an old module that's not as well known. And commerce guys at DrupalCommerce.org do the same on Tuesdays, but they focus specifically on the commerce ones. But look for others or write them. Um, everybody's using modules and we all have more up-to-date experience than others, so write it, it will have a date on it, people will know what to do, uh, they'll find it and it will work from there. Um, listen, and there's also a podcast, so Modules on Raffold, um, I can't remember how regular it is, but they interview a maintainer from popular modules. I'll discuss what, where it's at, what the problems are, what's happening for Drupal 8 versions, and so on. Um, and then there's also simplytest.me, which will allow you to pick a module or a distribution or any other project on Drupal.org and install just that on a fresh uh, Drupal install and try it out. Um, it's limited by time. I think it's a couple of hours by default. But just to try a module completely fresh without any of you, the rest of your projects, you're not corrupting the database, you don't have to worry about uninstalling it after. Try it out, see if it works, see if it does what you want, and go from there. And so, the final point, uh, or at least the final major point, is just the admin area of Drupal sites. Um, Lewis talked about it yesterday, slightly, and pointed out that in Seren it is a bit of a mess. But there are a number of ways we can make it better. I think some of the specific problems are the listing pages, so the content page, the list of users, all of these are just, they're not lists anywhere, they're not easy to add filters to. They're just a list of the content with a pager, and that's it. Um, there's a strange structure for the um, hierarchy of some of our pages, so when you actually add something like the admin menu module and see exactly where everything's listed, they're still not where you expect them to be. Some configuration is put in structure, some is put under content. Um, and it's difficult to customize these things because certain country modules would assume a page is in a certain place and linked to it. And if you've rearranged the structure to improve it, you suddenly end up with broken links in your admin area. But there are a lot of modules, people know it's broken, and so there's a lot of modules to improve this. Um, there's the admin views module. So that will create, replace all your listing pages uh, with a view, uh, equivalent views version, which will have a couple of filters by default. And then because it's a view, you can go in and add whatever columns or filters or change the settings however you want. Um, there's the uh, admin module, which I can't remember what it does off the top of my head right now. 
There's the admin menu, which provides a drop-down replacement for the toolbar so that you can dig down into the deep pages quickly rather than having to click a structure, click, click admin, click structure, click content, click whatever. You can just, this nice drop-down, looks very similar, and it just works. Uh, there's the module filter, so that on your modules page, you can actually search for them just by typing in the box, and it will remove all the different ones. So if you want to see all your views modules, and some of them might not be in the uh, views package or project, or I can't remember what it's called, then you can just start searching and find it. And there's a similar one for permissions, because again, there's nothing on there by default. So that you can then find your permissions page in particular, can become an unwieldy mess full of check boxes. Um, so they're all quite useful. And then finally, uh, code I've written. I'm not perfect. Uh, when I, quite often we all go back to our old code and find out that, yeah, it, we've made mistakes, it's not right, we've done things that are stupid. Um, but to improve, we just need to accept criticism. Um, I'm sure people have disagreed with some of the points I've made and we can go and argue about it later, and if there's a valid point, I'll accept this. Um, again, I've encouraged debate amongst your colleagues, amongst people at the camp, see what other people think and whether they're having similar problems. And as is on every Drupal.org page, be bold. Go and make these statements like I have. I mean, this is my second year at the camp, and I've come and given a talk and pointed out everything that we're doing wrong but hopefully there's enough there to encourage others to do the same and we can move on. Um, I've had a Drupal 8 summary for each of these things. But, um, I haven't dug into it too much, but there's enough there that um, there's some comments. So the coding standards, there's big structural changes. We're moving to OO. Um, with the, some of the standards will be different for that or just that we haven't used before, even though they're already there. So we need to go and check that they're sensible and make sure that code sniff and everything has uh, documents that work. Uh, commit sizes are ineffective, that's going to be the same whether we're on Drupal 7, Drupal 8 or non-Drupal projects. If you need to commit a, se a sensible change, then that's what you should be doing. Um, the pack commenting in Drupal 8, it's going to become more of an issue um, with annotations and cl auto class discovery in IDs all the comments need to be done properly and they need so that we can find these things and work with all the uh, in, uh, imp implementing and extending and finding where everything's actually coming from. Uh, commenting out code, it's the same problem, whatever kind of structure of code we've got, whether it's Drupal or not, but we need to stop leaving it in there just in case and accept that it's in the version control. If we ever need it, we can get it back. Uh, so on the modules, field collection, just stop using it. The entities have improved. We've got the inline editing form to add the fields in. It, I'm hoping it won't get converted. It, it was sort of abandoned. I did create an issue trying to get it marked obsolete, but somebody stepped in to try and maintain it. But just don't use the entities and nodes. Use the inline form. Leave it alone. Um, workflow, there was some big changes that have gone sort of unannounced. Um, this is the first link there is to uh, an issue that's been resolved to get Drupal to accept um, revisions that aren't the late, don't necessarily choose the latest revision as the default so that you can have draft versions and the like. And then there's a lot more to do with that to get it finished so it's actually usable, but there's a lot on the workflow group and a lot of people are working towards a better solution, whether that's with the workflow module or workbench or just getting enough into core that we can do it ourselves. Uh, the date module, well, the, there's a date component and a date time field in core now, and I haven't checked into them. I haven't looked into them much, but I'm hoping they're a lot better than the module. Um, presumably, the module will still be needed to provide certain things, like possibly pop-up calendars, although I think they're in, but certain, I'm sure, configuration options will not make it into core, but hopefully the module will become a lot simpler and it will all just work from now on. Um, regarding too many modules for every little thing, there are some discussions going on to be in various contribution queues to merge them, merge projects, or to work together, or to reorganize and restructure things, because 
Drupal 8 such a big change, they've, I mean, they've got to rewrite the module anyway, let's make it better. Um, contrib, well, hopefully in the move to Drupal 8, some of them won't, that don't need to go won't, will drop off and be, become obsolete, and if we're not using them, they'll go. But we need to find a way as a community to make modules within contrib more discoverable, more to, to allow us to compare them better. If you want to do a thing and there are four modules, we need to find a way to list the differences. I know there are certain pages on Drupal.org that do this, but they're buried deep within the site and there's no easy way to find them. Uh, and then admin area, that is before yesterday from Lewis, there's a lot of improvements there. There's mobile is a lot better. The list pages are all becoming views now that views is in core. Um, but as Lewis was saying, there's more to do. We need to get involved and make sure it's done. And the code I've written, well, I'm always trying to improve, and that's why I'm here this weekend listening to everybody. Um, and yeah, are there any questions? Or does anybody want to argue with me about anything I've said? No? Well, I guess we're done a bit early then. Oh, there. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought at least some of the modules might get defended, because. Um, the work, uh, which one was it? The field collections is by Vago and Tim Plunkett, and I thought there might be some people defending it because it's what it does is good. It just doesn't quite do everything, and then it becomes a problem after. But if everyone agrees, I'm happy. And if anyone wants to leave feedback on the talk or talk to me after, there's Twitter and there's a link to join in. The slides will be available um, as a PDF when I've worked out how to export it as a PDF from deck.js, hopefully tonight. If not, I'll put them online as a site for now and worry about that later. Mm. Do you ever see um, any checking, uh, corresponding checking uh, going on if it submits, uh, modules submit? Um, yes, you can do that with the hooks. And uh, the question was, um, how do you deal with... Um, do you ever see the Drupal uh, Society actually forcing that to happen, though? Um, do I see the, commun the community in Drupal.org forcing that? Um, I imagine they will eventually for core. Whether they will for contrib, or whether they'll be worried that that will scare too many people off from trying to maintain this. Whether it will be an option for module maintainers themselves to select, I don't know. I'd like them to. I can't imagine they ever will because it would stop too much contribution and Something that gets halfway and not quite in the right manner is better than nothing at all. But well, if it should be called in the build pipeline by the community's integration facilities, hmm. I guess there's two words in different ways. We force everyone to work the same way as bad people. It works for forcing it, but people sort of don't get it in a work like that. Hmm. Well, Um, and yeah, I guess if you are a module maintainer, you could run them manually yourself and refuse to accept the patch otherwise, but maybe it's better to accept it and to fix them yourself if, because someone's already taken the effort. Uh, is there any other questions? <coughs> So the question was, is there a better way to manage uh, the module discoverability within Drupal rather than looking to blogs and external things? Um, I guess the, there probably is more that could be done with Drupal.org, but there are many things that need doing to it, and that's probably not going to be a priority just yet. Um, I'm not sure if there's an issue or a group anywhere where people are discussing these things that might be worth looking for or starting one if someone feels strongly enough to try and herd everybody together. But yeah, I, I'm not sure it's going to be a priority anytime soon. I don't, so I don't know.
Okay, I think that's everyone. Thank you for listening and coming and staying till the end. <laughs> <laughs>